Thunderbird is a pretty big open source project, and yet I feel like KDE is actually bigger. That said, let's give a quick look at the income numbers. In 2022, KDE earned 280,000 bucks. That's a lot. Instead, Thunderbird, just Thunderbird, not Mozilla, has earned 6.4 million bucks. That's um, 23 times higher. <laughs> they managed to receive $4 million just during December 2022. You might say, okay, but KD mostly earns through donations. Thunderbird might have some companies giving them money. Except, uh, nope, they earned 6 millions just in donations. And yeah, donations are 99.9% .9 of the revenue compared to 65% for KDE. So, last Last important number, Thunderbird received donations from 300,000 users. Just wow. <laughs> so these donations allowed Thunderbird to expand its staff from 15 to 24, 24 members. A substantial portion of the donations, almost 80%, was allocated towards those personal costs. The remaining funds were meticulously distributed across various essential domains such as administ administrative expenses, bank charges for donations, personal management, legal and tax advice, and IT infrastructure. That was difficult to, <laughs> to say. But how was all of this possible? Well, in an effort to bolster community engagement and financial support, Thunderbird initiated a series of measures towards the end of 2021, which continued to have a significant impact throughout 2022. The primary channels of engagement included more frequent blog posts, daily interactions across social media platforms, but we'll get to that, and a novel in-app donation appeal. These initiatives not only facilitated a two-way conversation between the Thunderbird team and its communities, again more on this later, but also contributed to a significant surge in financial support as we've so strengthening the project economical foundations. The life as a non-native English speaker is difficult. Towards the end of 2021, Thunderbird introduced a first of its kind in-app donation appeal, something that few apps do, like it's first of its kind, which continued to resonate throughout 2022. This initiative not only provided an easy avenue for the community to financially support the project, but also served as a platform to actually explain how those donations would be utilized and benefit the project, and ultimately the community. This is the reason behind that amazing $4 million figure during December. That's the month when Thunderbird decided to send a notification to all users asking for some donations. This video, by the way, isn't sponsored. Nobody pays for it, except, again, through donations. Yes, that's right. I also need to have a first of its kind in video donation appeal to make sure that this channel can grow as fast as Thunderbird. I wish. So, but we're actually a team of multiple people working on this project, with each video taking one hour to script, one hour to record, and even more to edit, and then half an hour to publish everything. All of this works if I can hit the monthly goal of 1,000 euros roughly, and you can see floating about above my head the current situation. If you'd like to tip something, I've got Patreon, Kofi, Libra, Pay, PayPal, and so on. And if you do get special, and if you do, you do get special content as well. So it's a win-win. Now that I have secured my 6 million bucks a year, let's get back to Thunderbird. The project started using new social networks such as Mastodon in 2022 as well. They started producing a podcast called Thundercast, which already has 15 episodes at least. In the podcast, developers explain how the project will grow and what new functionalities will be added. The social media accounts are very active, frequently posting memes and retweeting all the cool stuff that random users do on Thunderbird. On top of that, the account thanks each person that publicly says, hey, I just donated to the project. I know it doesn't seem like much, but it really helps. If I have to indicate who I really think nailed the social media strategy, 
I would point my finger at Jason Evangelo, Evangelo, that's not how you pronounce it, I'm really sorry about that, who also, by the way, owns the Linux for Everyone uh, YouTube channel. He's joined the social media uh, team roughly one year ago, maybe a bit more, and just a few days ago, the team doubled in size with, I am not getting this name, name correct, Monica Ayens Madon previously employed at Canonical and Ubuntu Community Council member. I mean, that's quite a team. <laughs> of course, there's a blog as well, and this includes, yes, announcements, but it also features a monthly blog post covering all the work in progress for, as an example, the merge of Thunderbird and K9 Mail. I'll talk about that later on. Even more, there's a newsletter as well, which again contains all the plans of the project with mockups and ideas. This makes sure that users can actually give feedback on what is going on at all times and I think that from a promotional point of view, the team has done a perfect job taking a project that many people, including the project itself, they state that, thought was that, and reviving a strong and vibrant community around it with constant communication with the users. 10 out of 10. By the way, let me flex here. Thunderbird does follow me on Twitter, so I'm just that famous. That um, at the same time, we saw a very big rebranding operation. Again, just a few years ago, it felt like Thunderbird was like dying. The project then decided to kill that idea entirely with a new logo, a complete big redesign called Supernova, which is a great branding name, and even starting the work towards some major features like Android support and the ability to synchronize emails between devices. So let's talk about this in more detail. Let's start with the logo. This is the logo, made by none other than John Hicks, which again, I mispronounced, I swear, <laughs> who's the author of the original Firefox and Thunderbird logos. It's clearly modern with some nice gotchas, such as the fact that the white male symbol in the center has the shape of a balloon. The logo redesign announcement shows of a monochromatic version as well, since Android has an option for, an option for that. I think it's again a 10 out of 10 operation, well thought, drives the modern point home while still keeping the branding somewhat consistent with the friend application Firefox. Then we have the full redesign, code named Supernova. Let's very quickly go through all the important features. Firstly, there's the modernized cards view, which introduces a vertical layout for the message list, emulating a more modern mobile interface list with multi-line support. This is complemented by a dynamic unified toolbar that changes based on the active tab or space, offering customizations to better suit individual workflows. There are so many. If I need to pick one, I would say the customization aspect. In particular, because there are a lot of users or our current user that they put Thunderbird on a pedestal for how customizable it is, but it's actually not. The redesign extends to an intuitive app menu, which is now keyboard accessible, streamlining navigation for a faster and easier user experience. Additionally, the calendar has seen design improvements featuring a more pleasant color palette, totally agree with that, an improved mini month layout, and other minor tweaks to modernize its look and feel. Supernova has also introduced elegant density control, something at Kedi we would like to have, but that's not easy to do, allowing the user to easily adjust the density setting and font sizes throughout the application with just a single click from the new app menu. This is especially useful for those working with multiple monitors and varying uh, system display resolutions. In terms of organizational features, sortable folder modes have been introduced, giving users more control over how the folders are displayed. Users can now sort folder modes and display all tags in the folder pain and toggle local folders on and off, contributing to a more organized and streamlined user interface. A new eye-catching tags view has been added to the folder pane, enabling users to quickly jump to custom color-coded tag categories, which can significantly speed up the process of finding and filtering messages. The address book too has seen improvements, with a new tabular view, an improved edit button, delete buttons, and better accessibility. 
Speaking of accessibility, Supernova has made substantial strides in improving keyboard and uh, navigation and, and, and screen reader accessibility throughout the application. This includes expanded capabilities to navigate mail content and buttons using the tab and arrow keys. And lastly, Supernova is not a one-off update, but represents a continuous evolution with a promise of many more improvements to existing features and the introduction of brand new ones like Thunderbird Sync in the near future. Now you might ask, what's the point of Thunderbird Sync? Probably you just use Thunderbird in your computer and you don't really need to synchronize between different devices. But what if you also used Thunderbird on your phone as well? The aspiration to extend Thunderbird beyond the desktop began actually quite some time ago, 2018, when the Thunder third <laughs> when the Thunderbird product manager Ryan Lee Sipes, Sipes met with Christian Ketterer, come on, <laughs> the project maintainer for K9Mail, an open source Android email client. They aimed to find a collaborative ground between the two projects to deliver an enhanced email experience across platforms, ensuring that the final product adhered still to the open source and user respectful and fitting for power users and desiring for customizations and rich feature set. Of course, K9Mail officially joined the Thunderbird family without second thoughts, with a name expected to change to Thunderbird on Android after reaching specific development milestones. The collaboration intends to align K9Mail with Thunderbird's feature and visual appearance, investing in a brand new feature and quality of life enhancements. What a stupid sense and sentence I wrote there. Even cooler, this means that Canine Mail will improve by a lot too. The redesign of Canine Mail introduces a new message view aimed at better organization and key information highlighting. Some new UI elements include swiping gestures for message navigation, account indication via color-coded chips, a reply action button with the additional action in the overflow menu, and organizational labels for messages. Users can tap the gray area in a message to open a bottom sheet containing additional message details and reception, rec, recip, recipient's information. Users are also invited to join the ongoing canine mail beta to experience new features and the visual improvements above mentioned firsthand, with releases available on GitHub, Play Store, and of course, F-Droid. That's it for the mobile part of things right now. Again, if you're interested, there's monthly blog post about this, which is wow. But of course, there's even more features that get routinely discussed and announced with the community. Just taking the last tweet of the project, Thunderbird wants to implement Firefox Translate within the email client, meaning that you would be able to translate conversations without actually sending those conversation to anybody, not even Google, which is wow. <laughs> this feature has been announced with a clear deadline, which is the first quarter of 2024, so pretty soon. To finish off, since I'm a big KD person, I do want to say that I think KD has a lot to learn from this approach that Thunderbird has taken, especially the idea of sending notifications just one time every year after a major update to say, hey, we would love it if you could, you know, donate something. Sure, there is a risk of uh, appearing annoying, but I think the vast majority of users would be fine with it since it's a way to directly help out the project. After all, we are a non-profit and most developers are volunteers. It would be awesome to manage to hire some of them. I do have to say though that we do have a very nice fundraising page right now. See, Kitty has sporadic donations, but also members who donate at least 100 bucks every year to the project. For the announcement of Plasma 6, we decided to make a fundraising specifically about members since we only had 50 with the goal of reaching 500. <laughs> what I like of the page is that it explains in great detail why to donate, how to donate, and the perks that you will receive, and how KDE will use the money. We already gained 120 members to a total of 170. 
which translates to at least 12,000 bucks every year, but probably even more. So yeah, I'm, I'm proud of that page. I did nothing. <laughs> I did nothing to it, to be clear. Not thanks of me, but it's cool that we have it. <laughs> thanks, Carl and Paul and the promo team. Uh, regarding everything else, though, I just have to say to Jason, Jason, which I hope is pronounced Jason, <laughs> Jason, and not Yason, I don't know. Jason. And the Thunderbird social media team and the project leader and the developers. Wow, you managed to take a project that I never considered particularly important and you made it one of the most interesting success stories in the open source world. That's quite a feat.